The double cluster in Perseus is one of the easiest astrophotography targets to capture from everything from light pollution all the way to pure darkness. Tonight we're going to be photographing the double cluster up in Perseus with the brand new ZWO C-Star S50. Now I just received mine. It is so far a really cool device, but we're going to leave it track and stack on the double cluster tonight for quite a long time. Stick around and let's get started. Tonight's target is the famous double cluster up in the constellation of Perseus. Now Perseus, of course, is known for its meteor shower every year at the end of summer. But Perseus also offers us a lot of really unique deep sky objects, such as the California Nebula, the Little Dumbbell Nebula, the Double Cluster, as well as a lot of other interesting and intricate nebulae that are surrounded in this region with Cassiopeia. Now, of course, Perseus is in our Milky Way, so we get a lot of those hydrogen and oxygen-rich nebulae that do appear in the constellation for us. But today we're going after something that's not a nebula at all. It's just a traditional open star cluster. And what that means is that the stars are just kind of loosely bound together in an area of space. Now, these two are kind of a brother-sister pair. They're only separated by about 100 light years or so, so they're actually relatively close in terms of space terms. Now, the double cluster is so bright, shining at fifth magnitude, that you can see it with your naked eye, usually from dark skies. This object is a beautiful target to see in anything above binoculars to small telescopes to big telescopes. You will, of course, get the full image in a smaller piece of equipment like a wide field refractor or perhaps even binoculars to get the full two open clusters sitting next to each other. Now the C-Star S50 of course has a relatively small camera chip in it. It's got a 462 Sony chip in it. It offers a relatively cropped view of the night sky unfortunately. Now the only good thing is though is that for something like the double cluster that actually helps us out a lot because that frames the double cluster on most perfectly in its chip. So the sea star should be able to handle the double cluster, the entirety of it, with no problem at all. The double cluster is well known as being one of the brightest in the night sky. It's got a lot of white and bluish hue star members to it, as well as a few of really bright gold members that sit out and around the clusters. So I'm hoping that we can capture those star clusters tonight with the sea star S50. Now, the Seastar S50, if you've not heard about it, there's countless videos on YouTube and reviews on the internet about this little device. It is a smart telescope. It's an all-in-one contained unit, and it is pretty much the cream of the crop when you're thinking about something that's super highly portable, that can take pictures for you. It's really the bee's knees. Now, this little device is 50 millimeters in aperture, 250 millimeters in focal length that gives us roughly f4, f5-ish. And coupled with that small little chip, we should be able to fit some relatively decently large targets in there, such as the Pleiades, the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead, things like that. It is not, however, intended for planetary use. Because it is so wide field, it just can't get enough magnification. If you're looking to photograph the double cluster, my recommendation to you would be something like a wide field reflector or a small wide field refractor for this. If you're just using something like your regular crop sensor DSLR or you're using a dedicated astro camera like I have, typically my 183 camera, you'll fit it pretty well at about 500 millimeters or so, and that'll be a really nice frame of the double cluster for you. Now, of course, you can go deeper if you wanna get closer to those star members, 
but if you want to get both with lots of color in the stars and just more of an expansive field of view, my recommendation would be to stay under 500 millimeters or so. Why don't we go set up this little buddy and get it ready to rock and roll on the double cluster. Now that we've removed the dust cap, we can hit the little star map button down here. We can see where our current position is. We're going to need to find the double cluster. So we need to swing on over here. Here's Cassiopeia. Double cluster should be right about here. And we can just zoom in just like that. Frame it up like this. And hit our little button here that says go to. And then the sea star will zip around here and try to locate the double cluster. And we can kind of see the preview here as it's going to move around and it'll try to swing into the field of view. We'll see the camera come into the field of view here, just like that. And hopefully, if we are successful, when we go out of this, it'll tell us that we are successful and it'll locate that object right in the center of our camera field of view. Object is centered. Right, we got the object is centered. It's going to do a preview real fast. And voila, there's the double cluster on our screen. Now, we're going to hit this little button down here on the bottom that's going to do a dark frame, and then it's also going to start stacking the images for us. So that's what's going to give us the nice resolution and clarity that we're desiring for the C-Star tonight.